Welcome to the Quilted Joy Clubhouse. I am so excited that you are joining us today. You know, we have um, folks that we support all over the country that we interact with, and many of them don't have a machine quilting guild close to them. They may have a guild that um, supports kind of their piecing learning knowledge, but not a machine quilting guild. So um, we're fortunate enough we have a guild that meets here every morning on Wednesday, and I thought, well, you know, it would be a good idea to do that online as well. So I am so excited to start this venture with you. We are going to be doing a number of different things. We're going to have a short program um, for each of our meetings. Um, today we're going to look at different ways to quilt a flying geese unit. Um, we're also going to have a looky-loo session where we uh, video chat with a uh, quilter and kind of poke around in her space and see how she has her studio organized and kind of take a look at um, a machine quilting space and maybe that'll give you some ideas for your own space. Um, we're also going to take a look at a couple of, of my favorite things and we're going to look at um, some quilts that were submitted and look at how some, some different ways that you might quilt them depending on whether you want to do it custom or all over edge to edge, fast and easy or um, kind of more um, intense quilting. And then we're also going to have a show and tell where we take a look at some finished quilts um, from some of our friends. So um, I am delighted that you are joining me today. And hopefully, um, if you aren't able to meet us the first Wednesday of each month at 1 p.m. Eastern, both on our Quilt of Joy Clubhouse um, page on Facebook or on our Quilt of Joy YouTube channel, um, just know we're going to record it and we will have it available for you so you can watch it later. So if something's going on, you can't join us live, you can always watch us later. So thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, I did want to tell you a couple of things. So watch out for the um, May-June edition of Quilt Maker Magazine. I will have an article in that magazine. It'll hit the newsstands. I believe it's um, the first part of April. And it's all about using rulers um, for both a sit-down machine, whether it's domestic or long arm, and a stand-up machine. Um, the article that's going to come out for the May-June edition of Quilt Maker Magazine is all about straight line rulers and different border designs that you could do with a basic straight line ruler. So there's a lot of diagrams. There's even a downloadable student packet that you can access through that. So definitely pick up um, one of the Quilt Maker magazines because you'll see um, all that information in there and I think you'll really enjoy that. Um, here in the uh, here at the Quilted Joy Studios, now we're located in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we have a big event coming up next week. We have Linda Herker coming from the Quilted Pineapple and she's going to be teaching two uh, two two-day events, so she'll be here for four days with us, um, and I can't wait. Um, she's definitely, if you haven't discovered Linda, do um, go check her out. She's definitely a ruler girl. She's definitely um, a very traditional quilter. She has beautiful feather work, uh, amazing cr uh, curved cross hatching, so um, definitely go check her out. And then if you want to know about anything that we've got going on, both this um, Machine Quilting Guild meeting as well as any um, any classes that we have coming up, you can go to our website and sign up for our newsletter. And that way you'll get something in your inbox um, to remind you to watch, as well as any other information that we've got coming up for um, Quilted Joy. So, um, so let's take a look at how to quilt a flying geese patch. Now, I have um, some uh, downloadable that you can play along at home. And you can take that downloadable, print it out, and draw and sketch on top of that um, printing um, printout so that you can kind of get a better idea of how to do a flying geese unit. So let's look at a few different ways that you could um, do a flying geese unit. I'm going to go through some easy ways, and then we'll do some more decorative kind of um, harder ways as well. So there's um, I've got a number of flying geese that are in a row. And we're going to look at how we might um, quilt those all in a line. So. Um, I'm going to start actually here in this lower left corner, and I'm just going to do a cursive uh, letter E. So one of the nice things about letters is, you know, they're just shapes, but we've been making them all our life, so we are a little more in tuned with making them. And that's just an easy way to get started with quilting, is if you start to think about um, letters as shapes that you can quilt. So I started the left-hand corner, went to the right-hand side, because that's the way, you know, I write my letter E. And now I want to fill in the sky part of my flying geese. And so the easiest, simplest thing is to just do a little meander. So some kind of little meander. I just want to fill the space. If you think about, um, oh, jigsaw puzzle pieces, um, uh, winding path in the woods, all that'll get you to that kind of scribbly uh, meander. And then I'm going to cut through the tip of my goose and I'm going to enter back onto the sky. And the important part when I get the sky is I want to make sure when I exit, I exit towards the bottom left corner of my next goose because that will allow me 
to do my next letter E and then enter back in to my sky and do my meander, cross over the nose of that goose, come back down, fill that up, and then exit towards here. And of course we did um, a meander, you could do anything in there, but let's look at a different um, thing to put in the center of that goose. Um, so this time let's do a curl. So again, I'm, I'm here at my left corner of my goose and I'm just gonna go up, I'm gonna curl, I'm gonna tuck my tail way in. So if you think about the face of a clock, I just want you to notice, so here's six o'clock, here's three, here's 12, here's nine. So look at how deep I tucked my tail in. I really wanna tuck that tail in super deep into the center. And then when I come back out, I'm gonna cross over myself and that's how I get that kind of curled ribbon um, look to that. And then I'm gonna exit off to the uh, far right hand corner of my goose. And then for this sky, I'm just gonna do, some people call them refrigerator coils. Um, they're kind of matchsticky things, but they're just kind of back and forth and back and forth, little wormy things um, that'll fill that space up and go pretty fast until I cross over the nose of that goose. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this sky. Yeah, and then I'm gonna hit I'm just gonna always make sure when I end the sky that I end in this upper corner because that will allow me to tuck in and do my next, I'm ready here to tuck in and do my next goose, tuck my tail way in, cross over myself and then head back out. Um, and you can see on my drawing board, my computer's crunching a little bit here with everything going on, but that would be a smoother line. If I quilt that, I can quilt much better than I can draw. So that's, um, that's a couple of ideas that are pretty simple, good beginner um, ways to do a flying geese patch. I also wanna kinda challenge you to think about um, how to do a flying geese patch in a, a two passes. So let's take a look at that so that you can see um, what I mean. And so the first thing I'm gonna do down here is I'm gonna do a little, oh, it's like a, it's like a little Girl Scout cookie tree foil. I think those are actually out because I think they tried to hit me up at the grocery store last night. So a little quilted, a little um, tree foil thing. I'm gonna tuck in with a curl and I'm gonna head back out through the tip. And now I'm gonna deal with the sky. And so when I deal with the sky, I'm just gonna do a little point out to the edge of the sky and I'm gonna come up and fill in that gap there and I'm gonna make almost a whole circle. So if you notice, I did an S curve into the tip. I came almost into the whole circle and just before I finish that whole circle, I'm gonna head back out to the nose of my goose. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna do an S curved tip and then I'm gonna go into um, a, a curl and I'm gonna do a whole circle and just before I complete that circle, change my mind and come back out. And now I'm ready to do the next trefoil. I think that's what those Girl Scout cookies are called. Curl, and back up, S-curve, curl into the whole circle, come back out to the nose of that goose. And then when I reach the top, I have some choices here. Depending on the size of this goose, I may want to um, fill this in. This particular size, I think it's fine the way it is, but if you have an extra large goose, you may want to come down and add a little echo line here and fill that space out. So you can always kind of add in an extra element by coming back down your geese um, when you reach that final pass. So let's take a look at stitching out a couple of these on the frame and um, give you a sense of, of how these look stitched out. So over on the machine, I've got some flying geese here um, laid out and I'm just gonna do these little guys with that letter E that we were working on before. So I'm just gonna bring my bobbin thread up to the top and I'm gonna start out with that lowercase e till I reach the side of the right side of my goose. And this is where I'm just gonna do that meander. And so I've got um, a closed toe foot here, but an open toe foot might help me see just a little bit better. And um, now I'm gonna head over, cross over the nose of my goose, and I'm gonna complete this side of my sky. And I'm just gonna make sure when I exit this goose that I exit in the upper uh, left-hand corner so that I'm now in the lower left-hand corner of the next goose. 
Let's just do it one more time. So letter E, and then my meander. So that's a nice, easy, simple way, if you're just getting started, to do a whole row of geese. And if you've got um, quilt glide or cruise or coast on your machine, it's just a secondary form of stitch regulation that's good for little tiny um, stipples like this. You might want to turn that on. So now here I am at my lower left corner again. And let's do that one that we did before where we did a curl in and then we came back out and um, filled in that gap with those kind of match sticky um, refrigerator coil things. So I'm gonna curl in all the way, tuck my tail in way as tight, way further than you think, and then cross back over myself and head back down to my lower right corner. And now I'm gonna do those little matchbook um, refrigerator coil things. And of course I'm using red thread um, on blue fabric, you likely would use something that matches. I just wanted to be sure that you could see it. So back and forth and forth and back and back and forth and forth and back. I just want to make sure that when I end, I end in that upper left-hand corner so that I can get started um, on the lower left-hand corner my next goose. So let's do another curl. And exit out to the point and do our little refrigerator curls. Cross over the nose, more curls. I'm calling them curls, but they're actual coils. All right, and so there we are. So those are the stitch outs for the two that we looked at. Let's do that one that was a little bit um, more open, a little bit bigger um, on some of these bigger geese that I have. So let me cut my threads and I'm gonna come back down here and I've got a big yellow goose. And this one, oh, I need to start in the center, don't I? So this one starts a little bit differently because that's how you're going to enter for the next goose. So I'm going to do my little Girl Scout trefoil. And a curl. And come back, swoosh up to the center. Now I'm up to my point. And now I'm going to do those um, uh, sky. Tuck away in, make almost a whole circle, change my mind, come back out. For a circle, change my mind, come back out, and now I'm ready for my next one. Almost a whole circle, cross over the nose, S curve, almost a whole circle, change my mind come back out. So those are some pretty big geese, but um, you could fill that in other ways too. That I just did that curl. So my hope is that you are going to go to our link that we put up that has um, your downloadable worksheet. And then you can print that out and you can play on it and design. I mean, there's tons of ways to quilt a flying geese. So that's just a couple of ways that, um, uh, three ways that I wanted you to see, but play on that worksheet. I think it's good to kind of doodle on paper. Um, I know that if I can't draw it, I can't stitch it. And I don't mean draw it well, I mean, I just can't. If I can't draw it, I'm not gonna be able to translate it in my brain to be able to move the machine to get the look I'm after. Um, and um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else about flying geese that I wanted to tell you. So, I think that's it. Next month we're going to look at half square triangles and different ways to quilt half square triangles. So we have a, um, a suggestion list in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse um, where I'm, I've asked if there are particular topics that you want us to cover in the program portion of our um, guild meeting. So do respond in there if there's something in particular you want us to address and we'll add it to our list. But um, I think kind of playing with units and ways to quilt units will be helpful to you. So um, I wanted to thank our sponsor our sponsor is APQS, and they have generously um, given us machines here that we can use on camera to help you uh, with your quilting journey. They make machines in Iowa, handcrafted, and if you'd like more information, you go to apqs.com or contact your local dealer or your local store. Um, okay, so I have a special guest that I want to meet, and her name is Mary Goldsberry, and I'm going to flip over so that we can see her. And this is our little. Ah, there we go. Hi, Mary. Hey. Hi, how are you? Hey. 
Thank you so much for, for being our guinea pig. Oh, you're I really welcome. Appreciate it. Somebody had I to know do that, it. Yeah, right, exactly. And <laughs> and this is new to, to you and it's new to me. So I appreciate you kind of uh, flying by the seat of your pants right along with me. Okay, good. I'm glad <laughs> to do it. So, um, so Mary, I had asked you some questions about your quilting world, and then I want to also um, be nosy around your studio and kind of see some more um, things in your uh, quilting studio and how you have to set up. But first, um, I just want to know how long have you been quilting, and how long have you been long arm quilting? Well, I started quilting in 2010 after I had quit working. I was about 51. Um, and then I started long arm quilting uh, just about a year ago. I just I just had my first anniversary, so <laughs> good. It's been quite a ride. Yeah, <laughs> it's been fun. It's really been fun. Good for you. Um, so yeah, tilt the camera just a little bit because we're missing your eyeballs. There you go. Okay. <laughs> now, I can see you. now I can see you. Um, so what do you love the most about your quilting space? Oh, your well, space really, the the fact that I I really have a lot of space. I'm in the basement. Yeah. Um, my husband actually thought this would be a family room one day, but um, I have a lot of space to work with. And it was big enough when I did decide to get a long arm machine. I just had to rearrange everything, but it fit. So I, everything is in the same room. So it's really convenient. Great. And, and what would you change about your quilting space if you could change anything? Well, the one thing, because I am in the basement, um, I don't have closets, I don't have cabinets, so everything is out. So I, I purchased a few cabinets, but I have a lot of, you know, drawers and things like that, or some of my projects are on bags underneath. I've tried to utilize every inch. Sure. I've got things underneath my, my sewing cabinet that I can keep the extension table out. I have things underneath my cutting table. Okay, all right. Well, we want to see it all, Mary. So turn your okay. paper around so we can see. All right. Because we want to be nosy. So you've got okay. the basement. Can you see? Sewing, yeah, yeah. Okay, all so right. all right. So take us on a little tour. Tell us what we're seeing. Okay. Well, let me back up a little bit. Yeah. So you can see the long arm. <laughs> you know, okay. the feature. Um, right. So I had to, um, I actually had my sewing cabinet pretty much kind of in the middle there. And I had... Uh -huh my uh design wall over there so i moved that i wanted to place the machine there because there's there's no water pipes or anything above it so i ah. have to be mindful of that being in the basement sure and then of course i've got things underneath my right. sewing my long arm right there's there's some cabinets where i've just i've got i do sometimes um, i do some other crafty things so i've got all kinds of stuff in those cabinets okay and then here's my Cutting table. Cutting table. And right. I made sure I positioned this below a window. I've got a couple windows down here. Uh -huh. My husband did add a bunch of lights for me. He added a lot of plugs so I could kind of be anywhere and have access to light and plugs. So that yeah. was a real a big nice plus. Hubby. Very yeah. nice hubby. And then this is my sewing cabinet. Oh. So I've got some Ooh. more shelves underneath there. I've got my travel machine that kind of just sticks under there. Oh. And this was nice. Um, so that I could have some plugs in the middle of the room. Uh -huh. um, you know, he built those little walls around the posts that were down here. Oh, so, so I thought on this back circular. side, you, you know, had I think it was getting in a drawer to get my rulers out. So I had him put pegboard there and I'm, I'm hanging a bunch of my rulers and stuff there. That's so a that great worked idea. out really nice. Yeah. Great idea. And then I, I moved my design wall behind me, which works out really well because I can just kind of swing around and put things there. And so, so Mary, is that some kind of gridded flannel that you have covering it, it is like i got that from fonts and porter and okay. um it is flannel it's gridded so which is do, nice it's do really you like nice. the grids Does, is that helpful um to be honest i don't really pay attention to them because oh. when i put things up there you know i do things in all different size blocks so it doesn't really matter to me i just put them up there to really get more of a visual of how i want to place my blocks so sure. i really haven't used the grid part for that so I see a then, shoe organizer beside it. What do you have in there? Yes. Um, all of my interfacings. Every now and then, just to switch things up a little bit, I might do some other crafty project. Uh -huh. So I've got a few things uh, there. Um, and that's kind of all that's in. Mostly interfacing and things for t-shirt quilts or if you're doing applique. Yeah. The, you know, the backing for that. Sure. And, and I then, see, oh, so you've got, is that a, a small pressing station there? So that when you're piecing, 
It is. And I was just fortunate enough to go to the Daytona show in Florida. And I bought that because I was going to have to come home and put something on there, an ironing table, because I had something else there before. So that Uh worked out really nice. Okay. I want to see that pin cushion too. What is that? looks like a little derby hat to me. What is the pin cushion? um, It's supposed to be a rose. (laughs) A rose. It looks like a little derby hat. That's cute. I like the derby hat idea. Yeah, that's cute. All right. Well, that makes sense to have your, your pressing right there where you're piecing. So, yeah, but you've got and a then bigger, for, and then for my other, you know, this, I put a board on top of a regular sewing machine and covered it. And this is great when you first get material and you need to press it all. Yeah. You have such a large area to press without using, you know, the end of your regular sewing or your uh, ironing board gets narrow. Right. It takes forever to iron material. So you so just that, took that a was, regular, like a piece of plywood. Yeah, that's all that's on there. And, and then, then I what, just covered it. What'd you cover it with? There's just little pe- there's just little boards. I've seen it done two different ways. Um, this just has two little boards underneath. Let me see if I can get under there and show you. <laughs> you didn't know you were gonna get on your I know. Your floor, did you? Can you see that? <laughs> can yeah. you see that? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Like the, hugs it. Yeah, there's just there's just little boards. Right. Now some people will use like little um like chair feet or something like that, little knobs, you know, uh-huh. that you just screw in. Oh. So that it doesn't shift. Interesting. But it works. It's so nice. It's really so nice. And so did you cover it with that um, that batting that has the heat reflection in it? Is that what you covered it with? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Perfect. Yep. And there's your And then thread. these little shelves, I got it at a yard sale. They were, they were, they're CD holders. And I thought, well, they're great for my thread. Yeah. So, and I have them over here in the corner where it's dark. So the sun from the windows doesn't get on them and all that stuff. Perfect. And then this is my stash cabinet, and I wish I had a few more. <laughs> Your stash. I need to know how much stash everybody yeah. has because I don't think I have enough. <laughs> <laughs> you never have enough, Mary. You never. I never know. Have. I know. I yeah. can't convince my husband of that, though. Yeah. So you have a serger, I see. Yes. Yes. Oh. And these are current projects I'm working on. Okay. Um, and um, so, Mary, you quilt for others, right? I do. Yes. I just started doing that towards the fall you know when I felt more comfortable and right now I'm really only doing edge to edge Uh but I do want to pick up uh custom quilting this year it's going to be my focus to really learn that this year perfect you know just getting my machine in February last year um I just took my time because I bought an IQ with my machine Uh you know I I kind of used my machine free motion I have a couple of pantographs so I tried that and then I really wanted to focus on learning the IQ. So that's really where my attention is right now. And so are you doing a lot of t-shirt quilts for others? Um, you know, ironically, uh, this, this is the first, my, these are for my niece and nephew. Uh, mm-hmm. These are for my brother's clothes. And this was my first attempt. I didn't have a pattern. I just kind of did it. Yeah. Uh, I got a phone call just last night for somebody that wants me to make a t-shirt quilt for her daughter because that's her awesome. son passed away. So. Good for I got you. Some pricing together for that. Sure. Um, so, and I so see you've yeah, got printed that. photos incorporated. I in did. The- um, this, so this is kind of a combo picture t-shirt quilt. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted, because this was my brother, I wanted it to be really special for my yeah. niece and nephew. So, and did you yeah. put on your home machine then? I did. Um, I sewed this on my home machine and then I have to figure out how to quilt this, I've, especially because there's pictures in it. Right. So um, I'm hoping to get to your group next month and yeah. uh, get some ideas on how to get this quilted. Well, so, so the biggest thing, Mary, would be, you know, nobody wants stitches on their face. I know. So, yeah. So I would just make sure that you, I would just do a big meander or if he was a Cincinnati, if he's a baseball fan, maybe it's, yeah. you know, like kind of circles, but just stay okay. off the faces, just go around the faces. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I didn't see your batting storage. Where the heck do you have oh. your batting Um, well, I got, I got, I just bought a new one. I just got that underneath the long arm machine laying on the floor. Okay. And what's your favorite batting? Oh, you know, I like the Hobbs heirloom 80, 20. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's got a nice weight. It, it, I mean, it does really well, whether you're on your home machine or using it on the long arm machine. Okay. I've seen other, I've seen others that, you know, are thin and I, I just don't really like them. And what about thread? What's your favorite thread right now? I've tried three or four different kinds of thread and I do like superior thread. I mean, they just have thread for anything you could possibly want 
for a project. Perfect. And they've got education. So it's, it's, it's just nice thread. I really like it. Good. And show me your, um, your machine. Is that a 10 foot or a 12 foot? It's a 12 foot. A 12 foot. So it's, yeah. so it's got one side against the wall. So it kind of tucks in there pretty nicely, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah. And I've got room to get behind it. So. Yeah. And you got your exercise bike there. I see. Yeah. So. Yeah. As, as the computer's stitching out, you can go uh, get on the bike and, uh, and wait for it to get finished. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, turn that around because I got uh, turn around so like we can see your smiling face because I've got um, a few questions okay. for you. So, uh, okay. three recommendations. What would be three things that you would tell your bestie about? Doesn't have to be quilty related. Just like three things that have improved your life. And kind of tilt that camera up so we can see your face a little oh. bit better. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, what would be three um, things? Well, the one thing, you know, find your passion in life, whatever it is. Mine just happens to be quilting, <laughs> but it can be anything um, because that's really where your joy is going to come from. And that'll just flow over into the rest of your life. Um, another favorite thing of mine is this, and I'll just kind of hold this up. I found, I have tried all kinds of different techniques with sewing and I've done a couple things with applique and the first thing I did was horrible. I mean, it just, it was horrible. So I happened to be on a little quilt retreat and I saw this little uh, video, uh, DVD. Wait, I can't see it very well. Okay. There you uh, go. Okay. Applique techniques and yeah. with Pearl and I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Yeah. I watched this one time and I'm telling you, I can applique like a pro. Awesome. It is, it is that good. I would recommend anybody that wants to try it or they don't think they're very good at it to get, get this DVD good. because it's awesome. What's the what's the website listed there? I thought it said P3. P3 Designs. P3 Designs. Is it? Yes. And her name is Pearl P. And her last name is P-E-R-E-I-R-A. I don't know how to pronounce that. Great. Yes. Good. Um, and the other thing is, let me, I'm going to flip this around again yeah. so you can see this. Yeah. All right. You're going to flip us. Can you, can you, is I'm it seeing. flipping? Yeah, it's working on it. There we go. Okay. I see All a right. big green fuzzy thing. <laughs> yeah. What is this that? Is, I, I'm a little fanatical about keeping my sewing room clean. Awesome. So you should come over thing. to mine because I need that. <laughs> <laughs> This thing is the best duster. I mean, it's because it's long and big. Yeah. It takes no time to dust everything. The table on the long arm. Yeah. And it just picks up everything. Awesome. I mean, it's a breeze. I love it. Okay. And these two things, I'm, I'm going to add another thing in here. Yeah. These things come off of bed sheets when you buy them. It's the plastic things your bed sheets come in. Right. I save those so that if I'm going on a quilt retreat or to a sit and sew or something and I'm taking multiple projects or maybe I got part of my blocks cut out already. I just stick them in there to keep things separated so they stay dry if it's raining for one thing and they're just easy to take with you. Awesome. So that's really nice and handy. Great. And the other last uh -huh. thing. Yeah. Quilters select rulers. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've started replacing all my rulers. Oh wow. I'll give you a quick little demo. Can you see yeah. my hand? Yeah. I am pushing on this thing and it is not moving. Cool. They really don't move. Cool. <laughs> I have tried several different brands of rulers that slide. Yeah. These, I don't know what they put on the back of these, but they really work. Awesome. Well, Mary, thank you so much for giving us a tour and thank you for giving us uh, a look at some of your favorite things. Where can we find you online? Well, I just created, I'm not a techie person, but I just created a Facebook page, Quilting and More by Mary. Perfect. And um, I'll be adding information as time goes on. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. All right. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Isn't that fun to be a little nosy and look in somebody's studio and see their giant, uh, their giant green uh, uh, cleany thing and go, oh, I need one of those or just the small little ways that people have. I love the way how she took the support for her basement uh, foundation and just boxed that out and covered it with um, pegboard. And now she has a whole little storage caddy there to, to work with. So um, thank you so much, Mary. I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the clubhouse there on uh, in our Facebook group. Um, so thanks again. All right, let's look at some of the uh, new things that have arrived. I just want to show you a couple of fun um, uh, wide back fabrics that have walked in the door that I think you'll like. So let me grab um, this one, I think is my, my current favorite. 
I go through um, a variety of favorites. And this one is um, a Robert Kaufman Effervescence, and this one is the water. Um, I just love all the little bubbles and the little, um, the variations of the purple and the blue. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a different one. And this one just walked in the door oh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, and the links are all in the description. So let me turn this over so I can see what it is. Um, so this one is Radiance um, by uh, Henry Glass, and this is Eggplant, and I just love those um, oranges and reds and pinks and yellows and that little uh, fun rainbow color. So again, you can find um, all the information, the links there in the comments. And I'm going to show you the other version of that one. Oh, this one is the black and silver version. Again, Henry Glass, and this one is called, what is it? Black slash bright. It has a little tinge of, um, oh, peacocky blue. Um, it's kind of a steel blue is I guess what I would call it and then kind of a uh, faded out lavender as well. So it's not straight up silver and black. It does have just a little hint of color in it. So that's really nice. Um, and my other favorite, you can tell that I like brights by all of these um, that I'm showing you. So this one looks like Skittles to me. Um, this one is Timeless Treasures. And it is dot, dot swirls, which makes sense. Looks like little Skittles, but anyway, all fun rainbow colors. So those are some of the new wide backs that we've got in. And um, just for you, there's a, um, a coupon uh, that will get you 15% off for the next two weeks. And that coupon code is QJLive. And so if you pop that in, you'll get 15% off um, your wide back purchase. Okay, so let's take a look at how would I quilt that. So one of the other super common things that I get asked all the time is um, how do I quilt my quilt and it can be a little intimidating so I ask for some folks to submit a quilt to me in the Quilted Joy forum so that I could kind of draw on your um, photo and give you a sense of how I would quilt it if it were my quilt so the first one that we're gonna look at this one is Julie O and she sent this photo in and by the way if you would like for me to do this on your quilt just submit them there in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse on Facebook and then I'll pick two or three and we'll look at them each month so this one is by Julie and isn't this gorgeous so there's so much white space in there to play but you can tell that that might be a little bit intimidating because there's so much white space in there to play so um, so let's take a look at uh, one idea of how to quilt it so first I want to play with um, this kind of um, star here and it's floating on these very different shaped white spaces. I'm just going to bring my stroke down here to two I think. Okay so let's take a look at how um, one way to quilt it. So I'm thinking actually if I, I want to fill this up and I want to try to do this whole star in one pass. So I'm going to start here in my little tip and I'm just going to dip down to that center point, dip up to that seam intersection and echo back that same dip. And then I'm gonna go one more time into the center. And once I'm here, I'm going to do um, half of just a, a C curve up, so half of a leaf. And that will get me so that I can enter into the tip of my star, into this little corner of my star. Now I can drop in and deal with my star before I come back out and finish uh, going around my star. So typically when I encounter a shape, I try to quilt that shape the first time I encounter it so I don't forget, or if I do forget it, then the next time I encounter that entry point, I can take advantage of um, entering that space so that I don't forget. So I'm just gonna enter the star and I'm just gonna echo these points so, you know, this, this intersection right here, hopefully you guys, can you see my little, um, it's very small, isn't it? Here, I'll do a circle. That seam intersection right there, that is going to be kind of a scary place because there's a lot of seams, a lot of little skinny seams coming in there too. So I likely am not going to want my needle to get too close to that. I'm likely going to want to stay away from that. And that's why these kind of echoey pointy bits might be, the, oh, the blue's a problem. Okay, let's change, how about pink or red? Red will be really obnoxious. Okay, so I'm gonna go now, is that better? Okay, all right, so I'm just gonna echo those points. I'm not gonna go all the way, but I'm gonna go pretty darn close. 
and do all of those points. So now, depending on the size, I'm likely going to go back in and echo that. And once I reach this little corner, that's where I'm going to take advantage of dropping in and finishing my center. And I'm just going to do a curl into the center and come back out and echo that, echo that. Now I'm in this corner of my, um, of my center point and I'm going to drop in and do a curl and then come back out and echo that, echo that. Again, I'm in the corner so I can drop in and do a curl, come back out, echo, echo, and my final one, curl, and come back out. And now I'm ready to complete that kind of leaf shape that I made before and drop back out. So I've done one portion. I've now finished my star. Can I zoom in? Oh, now you're asking. Okay, <laughs> let me see. Zoom in. Oh my, okay, all right. And then I'm gonna, all right, so how about that? Is that better? Okay. All right, so where was I? Oh, I was right here. Okay, so now for this part, I'm just gonna drop in and come back out. And now I'm gonna do the same thing in this next section that I just did. So I'm gonna do a curve and a curve. Echo that. Echo it one more time. C curve for just like a little leaf shape and come back out. Dip in. Same thing over here, curve, curve, echo, echo, leaf shape, come back out, let's do it one more time. So you can see how I can do this whole space. Now this, I can't see where that is, so we're just gonna pretend. You can see how I can do this whole space in one pass. Okay, so there's my design. Now I can't really tell size on this. I just want you to notice if you felt like this space down here, um, here I'll draw an arrow to it. If you feel like this space is too open and that you really needed to fill that in because I can't tell size on this. When I dip down initially, I could have kicked out to do something. I mean, it could be as simple as just a curve out and a curve in, and then do the same thing over here, curve out and curve in, and then head back up, right, and finish. Um, so when you're at the base of it, that's your opportunity. If you need to add anything to put a little more density in that, that's your opportunity to, to do so. Okay, so now let's look at the other portion of this, and I am gonna have to zoom out on this one to see it a little bit better, so. Yeah, pretty cool program, right? It's just a free program. It's called Paintbrush. Um, now, I'm a Mac girl, so I'm using my MacBook Air. And Paintbrush is just an app that I found, and I can import in a JPEG, so a, either a picture I download um, off the Internet, which is what I did for these, because um, Julie posted this in our Quilted Joy Clubhouse, and then I can draw on that picture, or I can take a pic picture with my phone, save it to my um, computer, and then pull that in. And then as far as what I'm using to actually draw with, um, that is a Wacom tablet. And it is, it just takes the place of a mouse because it's really hard to draw with a mouse. So, so this is my mouse and this is my mouse pad. So it's just easier for me to draw with a pencil-like device than a mouse. Um, and I think I got this for like $60. I think they're also called bamboo tablets. They're, they're super fancy ones that are like, ooh, really pricey for the graphic design world. And then they have more um, home uh, versions, which is what this is. I think it was like $60, I think. So that's what I'm using to draw with. Okay, so I'm gonna go do, do zoom out. And so what I wanna do is I wanna deal with these spaces um, that you see here. And I'm gonna have to do this kind of in a wide shot in order for you to see it. Um, but I'm gonna do some straight line quilting actually. So I'm going to emphasize these um, interior spaces here. And the way I wanna do that is, um, first what I would likely do is go through and ditch this space. And I'm, I'm showing you how I would probably ditch it. All 
right, so, and frankly, I would likely have done this before I went to do all this stuff on the star because all this stuff on the star is gonna to start to move things around a little bit. And you'll notice if I ditch all of this, look, it's gonna also ditch that kind of star block on its own, right? Because if I ditch this, I'm also ditching the star at the same time. So it gives me a, a really nice opportunity to, to get that ditching done. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do some straight line um, sewing. So I'm gonna go from here up to here so I've kind of found the midsection of this white space. And then I would go from here to here. Again, the midsection of this white space. And then I'm just gonna go up and over. And then I'm gonna head back down. Okay, so now I wanna go back and I wanna deal with um, the interior portion of this. So if you notice what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start to have kind of a lattice support structure going on behind this frilly flowery bit. And so I'd like to put, because this is too much unquilted space, I wanna put a second square inside the square. So I ended here, I'm gonna go in with a line and then I'm gonna cross over this tip right here and I'm gonna head up to that midpoint right there. And then I'm gonna cross over and I'm gonna go up to this midpoint. And then I'm gonna cross over. Oh, and I just remembered I forgot to do something. When I come up to here, what I should have done is gone out and back in. All right, so I'm gonna add that here. When I came to this point, I should have gone out and back in. And yes, that means there's a double line there. Take a breath, it's fine. It's just fine. I'm gonna come up here. I would go out and come back in, cross over. It's kind of hard to see with perspective. Out and back in. And then when I reach this point, when I cross that um, corner of my block, I'm gonna deal with the interior, with this little setting stone here. Um, and I think I'm gonna just do a little um, Terry's Twist um, line dancing. Just a little curvy fill. And then I'm gonna go back to my straight line until I meet here. And then I'm gonna go back down until I enter my next quadrant. So let's think about this. So what that means is that each of these has a double line of stitching that goes out like this. And then when I return back, now this one will also have a double line of stitching. So I would come down here I would go out, in. When I reach this point here, I'm gonna go and do a curvy line to fill in that little cornerstone. Back to a straight line, go back down. And now I'm ready to do the same thing, enter in here. So hopefully you start to see how this will build and give me a really nice geometric, um, uh, very almost linear tile-like um, structure um, as we have all this curvy bit here. So, um, so Julie, uh, that's my idea for your quilt. <laughs> um, and we'd love to see how you quilt. I mean, obviously, do whatever you want. But I wanted to kind of give you an over-the-top version because you had said that you were going to um, custom quilt that. So that certainly, I think, would work and it would be fun. Um, for those long diagonal lines, you might want to mark those first and then find some intersections in your printed fabric, not in the white, but in the printed fabric to kind of readjust your uh, ruler in case you don't have a really long ruler. You could use a shorter ruler to do those spans, um, but you're certainly going to need a ruler to do those um, long, um, long straight lines. Okay, so let's see what the next one is that we have here. So I'm not going to see that. Okay, Rosemary. So Rosemary sent in this um, panel quilt. So she's got portions of a panel that she's cut out, she's framed out, and then she's added this really um, pretty delectable mountain um, uh, border design around it. So let's take a look at how I would quilt this. So the one thing that struck me when I saw Rosemary's quilt was how she had each of these panels um, framed out on um, point, this kind of red um, framing here on point. So I'm gonna keep this red, um, pin color um, because hopefully that will help you see a little bit. But so everybody here is framed out with this red on point background except for this little center guy. But it would be so easy to do it. So I just want to show you. So I would start here and oh, I've got my straight line good. 
and I would go up to here and then he would peek out. He would peep out right up here and then he would come back down. Hopefully you see where I'm going. And then it's gonna cross there. Okay, so that's one and then I would just echo that out. So I would go here and then here and then back down here. That one got a little wider than I wanted it to, but it's kind of hard to see on the screen. So now I have kind of a diamond frame that mimics what's going on in the rest of the, um, of the quilt. Now, it would have been smart for me when I crossed this point, so I'm gonna circle it here. When I cross, oh, I have my straight line. Hold on, let me undo that and go to my circle, my more flowy line. So when I crossed this point, this corner of that center, that was my opportunity to drop into and deal with the center of the um, quilt, the center panel. And so in this case, um, I, could, um, I could go around a ditch. I could, um, let's see, if I went in, I could, go and ditch the center. Ooh, I'm not very good at ditching, am I? Let me try that again. So I would drop in, I go around the center, I would do the same thing, I would put a little miter there, and come down, put a little miter there, come over, put a little miter there, and this is my chance I can drop in here. So with the birds and everything, and the holly and the leaves, um, you could do a simple meander, you could do a leaf, um, a leaf meander, but there would be something, it could even be, um, like a snowy, swirly um, sky. So this is my chance to go around my uh, birds. And I would actually stitch around. Here's my attempt to stitch around my birds. Probably cut his tail off and go around. And now I'm here, I can come back out, come back out this line. And I think I would go ahead and ditch this part too, just to frame that out. And this is my opportunity here. I could go in and fill in this interior, and I think I probably would, with some kind of curl. If you look at the fabrics of this panel, and when I cross over here, there's my little magic portal where I can drop into this area and do little curls. If you look at the fabric, it's swirly, snowy, snowflakey fabric. So a swirly fill in here um, would look nice. I'm gonna stay off those diagonals just so that it kind of poofs out and gives me some nice frames and this little swirly stuff will give me a chance to kind of play. Okay, so then um, as far as how to deal with these um, blocks, these um, actual bird blocks, let me see if I can zoom in. Zoom in, let me scroll down. Okay, so um, if, I, um, if I look at this, we talked about the letter E before when we were talking about our flying geese. So let's just kind of stick with that, um, that idea. So if I do lowercase e, lowercase l, lowercase e, I've hit this corner. I'm gonna do a lowercase l, um, and then lowercase e, lowercase l, lowercase e, and I've hit this corner. And you could argue with me and say, you know, that's a lot of space there to leave unquilted. So I could do, that and then lowercase e, lowercase l, lowercase e, and keep on, keep on a trucking all the way around the block. Okay, and I should have ended there, but I didn't. Um, so that gets you um, around the block, and also anytime I hit these corners, so right there or right here or in any of these corners, that's my opportunity to drop in and um, do some kind of fill. It'd probably be the same fill that I've got going on in that one. Go around my bird, right? And keep on filling whatever, I, whatever fill I, I choose out there. Um, so you can see this uh, snowy fabric a little bit better here. And I think what I would do is if I put a little snowflake, now here's my freehand snowflake, um, not the greatest, right? But I would probably, Oh, cut this out of paper and then put freezer paper, cut it out of freezer paper and then iron that freezer paper down and then just quilt around that freezer paper. So I probably drop in little snowflakes where, wherever I wanted them. And then in these, um, 
green triangles, some kind of um, design that has, let me see if I can move this over, some kind of design that has holly leaves in it because there's a lot of Christmassy holly stuff in it. Um, it would look nice in this little triangle area. All right, so there you go, Rosemary. I'm going to zoom out here. So hopefully that gives you a sense of what you could put um, in there. I would, I would probably do curls in here and probably in this space do, do whatever I did here, these little holly leaves. I would probably do the same little holly leaves over here. Um, so there you go. All right, Rosemary, that, hopefully that's helpful. Let's look at the last one I want to show you. And that was by Julie. And Julie sent me, she posted this butterfly. Um, I'm thinking, let me turn this off because I don't think we need that anymore. Um, okay, Julie. All right, so there's, um, there's Julie's butterfly. And for Julie's butterfly, you know, this is a panel quilt, so it's a great place to play. And Julie, what I would do is um, I would swoop. Oh, well, let me change colors because I don't think you're going to be able to see that red. Um, let's do, maybe do bright yellow. Ooh, where'd it go? Bright yellow. Okay, so Julie, I wonder if you can see that. You can? Okay, good. So I would go around um, the wings of this butterfly, um, and panels are such a great place to play. So I would just follow what the printed design is on my butterfly and get my wings. And then I think I would just do a little swoopy, S-curvy, add movement again, kind of follow what's been printed. And I'm gonna do it up here. And of course he's a butterfly, so he needs little antennas. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do almost a whole circle. And just before I complete it, I'm gonna change my mind. And I'm gonna come up here, almost a whole circle. And I'll change my mind. And then as far as the background goes, I think I would just kind of do radiating lines from the center. Again, the, the printed fabric is kind of doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you as far as just following it. And down here too. So I would come finish that out, you know, just follow. And you might uh, think about colors. Um, I'd probably use Oh, a, a yellow might be good. I might go to a silver because there's so many colors that we're crossing. Um, and then as far as this outside border goes, um, it kind of occurred to me that this space here, yeah, and this space here would be nice places to kind of tuck a butterfly in. So um, I'm just going to free motion here, free motion. I'm going to draw. I don't know that I can. Oh, my poor little butterfly. Okay, so there's my little butterfly. Um, he kind of looks like a squashed gingerbread man, but whatever works. Um, so I put a butterfly here and here and here and here. Um, in this outside border, I'd follow the butterflies. Again, it'll give you some good experience with free motion. So I'd probably put a loopy until I get to there and then do that butterfly and then put a loopy until I get to that butterfly. Yeah, and then a loopy until I get to that butterfly. Um, so that I can um, go around this outside edge. When I hit this black, just a loopy design. We'll let those butterflies kind of fly around. Um, as far as the rest of this border goes, just a simple um, continuous curve, I think really is all this needs because you don't want to kind of overwhelm it. Of course, this would also be good for an all over edge to edge, but I just wanted you to see how I would do, um, how I would do that. And then in the rest of the borders, I kind of consider the, these little strands piano keys. So um, I would drop in and probably, um, Oh, probably do some swirls. Okay, so here's here's a butterfly. So I would enter in, make my butterfly. Here's my little squashed. Oh, he's terrible. Squashed um, gingerbread butterfly, and then probably a swirl and a swirl and a swirl, and come back down and a swirl and a swirl and a swirl and come back down and keep on going around all in one piece. So there you go, Julie. There's. There's a butterfly. So I, I really, I hope that that was helpful to you to kind of see how I play. I do a lot of digital, edit, um, digital auditioning where I pull in uh, photos and play with them because it's just easier for me on the couch to be kind of playing that way. 
Um, but you could also do it analog. You could put down like quilter's vinyl and with a wet erase marker, um, draw right there on top of your quilt. You could also use some heavy duty cellophane and draw on the cellophane, the extra wide sheets of cellophane because you don't want to go off the cellophane onto your quilt. So there's a number of different ways that you can audition designs. Um, so hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was um, our show and tell. So one of the things that we asked people to do um, in the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse was submit um, and show us uh, a little bit more about who they are and what they're working on. And so here's some of the things that have been um, posted lately in the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse. And I'd love to see what you have. So please go in there and post and then we can um, highlight you next month. So this is Bill and Bill um, did the Civil War quilt and he did an all over edge to edge it looks like and this um, really lovely blue um, border has that nice kind of um, S-curve, fiery, um, it's got a big border on it, so that really shows off the quilting well, Bill. Nice job. Um, this is Joy, and Joy, she did an all over edge to edge. She said that she used glide thread for that. It looks like it's a double bubble uh, kind of look to it, so um, double circles. A nice when you ha have very squared off piecing to combine that with a uh, double circle. I really love how her binding is is that orange. It brings out the orange from the center and it has a nice a nice pop to it. Good job, Joy. And then Ann H submitted these two. So um, the bottom right one is a panel that she cut out and then um, look at all that, um, how she put it all together. It just looks really great. I love the fabrics. Um, I love the theme. Such a great quilt, Ann. And then on the top left, all of those beautiful batiks in those stars, great job. Um, I'd love to see Anne some close-ups of that once you get it quilted and see um, how you treated each of those because you did a great job. Really beautiful quilt. Uh, Mary Ann M, this is her fancy forest um, quilt. It's a pattern by Elizabeth Hartman and um, she used um, a number of different really great fabrics. I especially like her little hedgehog with the dots um, on his eyes. Um, so really, really great job, Mary Ann. Lori K submitted this one. Um, you can see in the large setting square, she did cross hatching, and then she also put some close-ups of the quilting that she did in some of the other um, blocks. Love it when you post um, close-ups so we can really see what quilting choices you made. That really helps everybody. So thank you so much, Lori, for doing that close-up for us. <coughs> Excuse me, here's Albie. Oh, she says this is her pride and joy. Um, I really love that center star and how she quilted. Hopefully you can see that with some straight lines and it makes it look like a woven, um, a woven star. That, that center star is my absolute favorite. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course it looks nice with all those blue ribbons on it too, right Albie? Um, this is Mary Ann. She did, um, this is Dance the Dragonflies. So she said this was a customer quilt. Um, she did the quilting on it. Um, really beautiful job. I love how she um, just really combined a lot of different elements in her freehand fill. So great job, Mary. And Anne-Marie M, this one is um, for, uh, I think she says she submitted this to a quilt show in Tennessee um, in that um, Gatlinburg area. So there's our little Gatlinburg uh, bear looking into the the car, but notice how she quilted that car to give that car some dimension between the hood and the side and the side of the car. Um, and then Sue, how simple is this, but how effective? Just a two color quilt, straight line quilting, um, really, really great job. Very nice. I like the pattern too. Nice job, Sue. Okay, so thank you so much. Those were all of the, um, all of the show and tells. If you have one to submit, put it in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse so that we can feature you next month. And so next month on Wednesday, April the 3rd at one o'clock Eastern, we are going to talk about half square triangles and different ways to quilt them. We're gonna have a downloadable worksheet again so that you can um, play with the half square triangles at home. We will also have another Looky Loo studio tour with another gal who's gonna kind of let us be nosy and um, we'll look at some other favorite things. And then if you've got a quilt that you'd like to see how I would quilt it if it were my quilt, submit those there in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse. And if you think that you would be open to us um, video calling you in your studio and taking a look around and talking to you, um, please just send me an email, Angela at QuiltedJoy.com because I would love to get you on the schedule so that we can um, kind of peep and see, see what things look like in your little world. So um, thank you so much and be sure to follow us on Facebook at Quilted Joy. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel so you're notified every time we post a new video and then over on Instagram you'll find me a lot of times when I'm traveling I'll post a lot of photos on Instagram um, and then we of course have a Pinterest page too so thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next month